Here I have a schematic of a three-phase transformer with a delta configured primary and a Y configured secondary. The power for this transformer is 14.4 kVA, kilo volt amps, thousands of volt amps, 14,400 volt amps. And remember the power coming in should equal the power going out. We're ignoring the small losses of the transformer. They're generally very efficient. Primary voltage 480, secondary voltage 208, 120. And this turns ratio. In this class, we're focused on the turns ratio, the number of turns on the winding in the primary to the turns on the secondary winding. So let's just start on the primary. There's only one voltage listed here. And that's because the voltage between the lines, remember to check voltage, you need two spots. It's a difference of potential between two spots. So I'll break my tester. Test here is 480. I move it down just a little bit of copper and test it right here. It's gonna be 480 as well. And that means in a delta, my line voltage, or some people call it line to line, and they put an L to L, but I just call it line voltage. Either is fine, equals my winding voltage, or some will call this my phase voltage. Okay, but how about the currents? Let's say I have 10 amps flowing through each winding. Now, I would have 480 volts across each winding. I just didn't write that in for, for all the different phases. So if I have 10 amps on each phase, how much is on the line? Let's think about this. If I have some current coming down this line, it has to split. It's kind of like a parallel. Some view the delta as parallel because the current has to split down two branches. The phases are not in phase with each other. They're out of phase by 120 degrees. That means if I add the amperage on this phase and this phase, they're not both going in the same direction at the same time. They're going back and forward a little bit. So it's like adding one of these phases with another one of these phases. If they're right on top of each other, just plus them. But they're 120 degrees out of phase from each other. And so it ends up that I take the winding current, multiply it by 1.73, and I get the line current. That would give me a line current here of 10 times 1.73. Not quite double any of these because they're out of phase. So in delta, voltages are the same, the line current is different from the winding current. Factor of root three, square root three, 1.73. Let's take a look over here at the Y. If my turns ratio is four to one, that means this 480 volts has to step down four turns here for every turn here. The voltage here will be one quarter of the voltage here on each winding. So each winding is mutually inducing 120 volts into its respective secondary. Okay. Where does the 208 come in? If you'll notice, the 208 is indeed 120 times 173 yields 208. I just drew it between B and C, but between A and B, and also between A and C, I'm gonna have 208. And why is that? Well, the 120 volts is between the neutral 
the neutral point and the phase. 120 volts, neutral to C phase. 120 volts, neutral to B phase. And neutral to A phase is 120 volts. That's how we power our receptacles and other 120 volt loads. Now, if I go from one phase to another, I'm going through this winding, that's 120, and this other winding, that's 120. But kind of like the currents over on the delta, they're 120 degrees out of phase. So let's take a look at this here. I'm gonna take this set of three sine waves, which could be for voltage or current. And when we do these calculations, we're assuming a balanced load, equal voltage, equal current on all phases. I'm gonna take two phases and compare them to each other because that's what I'm doing here. I'm testing the voltage from B to C. I'm not including the neutral, I'm not including A at the moment. So I'm really seeing what is the difference of potential, this one minus this one. So a positive value minus a negative makes it even bigger, right? It's positive minus a negative, it's a bigger positive number, it's like adding it. The largest difference is somewhere in there. And exactly, it's not double, but it's the 120 volts, this one relative to the neutral, or this other one relative to the neutral, times 1.73, a little less than double, gives me my line voltage. Now, I can use this for a single phase 208. I would take any of the two phases, single phase 208, all three if I have a three phase load. Okay, so that's the voltage systems. Now, what's the current here? If the voltage went down by a factor of four, voltage goes down, current is inverse, that must go up by a factor of four. So 10 amps through the winding, remember my turns ratio is talking winding to winding, not line to line. 10 amps here, will equal 40 amps through this winding. Now, what's the relationship to the winding current here and how much current goes down each line? Well, if there's 40 amps on each phase, let's look at this, it goes back to Kirchhoff's law. Whatever amps go into a certain spot, gotta leave. They can't just hang out and send some of them on. The bus is moving, they're all on the bus, they're all going, all the amps, as long as I got a circuit open. If I got no circuit open, I, excuse me, circuit closed. If I have an open circuit, all the amps stop. So 40 amps go through here, they come to this point, and in a Y, that side of the winding just goes straight down the line. All 40 gotta go. So on the Y system, my line current equals my winding current. Whatever amps go through this winding, gotta go down this line or back again. AC current, right? Flows both directions. Okay. So here are relationships. Voltages are the same in delta, different between the line and winding in a Y system. Amperages, line to winding, different in a delta, the same in a Y. Let's look at power real quick. You'll notice I put the same formula here as I did here. That's because power in equals power out. We ignore the small losses of a transformer. And that's my basic three phase power formula. Now, why can it be the same here and same here and get the same result? Well, the voltage is gonna be higher here and lower current, and the voltage will be lower here and higher current still works to the same power. But look here what I did. Voltage here is easy, it's 480. Current here, which one do I use? 
current here are the same, which voltage do I use? Use the line voltage, same voltage here, but I use the line number, times the line current, use the larger current, times 1.73. There's a couple different ways you can do this, a couple different formulas, but this is probably the most common we use for our three phase calculations. So it's based on the line voltage times the line amperage times 173. So in the Y, I pick the line voltage, the larger voltage, times line amperage, same 40 and 40, but I take the number from the line times 173. And they both equal 14,400 volt amps, or thereabouts, within rounding, because this is technically square root of three, so it'd be 1.732 or 17.32. So you'll be within rounding of 14,400 volt amps. And if I turn that into Kilo volt amps, thousands of volt amps, well, it's 14.4 thousand. 14.4 kVA. So that's our basic voltage and current relationships from delta to Y and our basic power formulas. Now, if you were given the power, and the voltages, could you figure the current? Yes. What I basically do is take the power and I take the voltage and the 173, bring them over to the denominator here to isolate my current. The key to remember here is that I must use the line voltage, the larger voltage line to line, 480 here, or 208 there. And this will give me my line current. Using 208 volts, it would give me 40 amps. Using 480 volts, it would give me my line current, 17.3 amps. And why do I put KVA times 1,000? Well, we're simply taking our thousands of volt amps and putting them back into volt amps again. So 14.4 becomes 14,400 divided by, remember your parentheses. If you don't use your parentheses, you'll end up with a number that's three times too big. And there we have our basic calculations.